As some of you guys may have heard, my name is Andrew Robbie. Uh, I work as a producer at Telltale Games, and I've been in the games industry for the last five years. Um, I'm a graduate of UAT. Uh, I had all of these lovely teachers. Um, and I just wanted to say that it's, uh, I actually was in the first two classes for this program. And it has come much, much further than when I was here. Um, it's good to see you guys focusing on your core game loops. Um, a lot of times with these projects, I know for myself, people get stuck in the weeds. They focus on things that aren't a part of the game. They want to spend so much time making everything look pretty. But the fact that you guys are actually able to get in and pretty much play all of these is really impressive, especially for this stage. And the fact that you guys are working on networking, that you're getting people from other majors, it's also very, very exciting for the program. Um, going forward, I hope that you guys keep working on these classes and you guys keep working on these projects. Um, these are what are going to help you get jobs. These are the things that you're going to want to showcase. So I know it may seem crappy sometimes to have to stay up late doing some programming or something like this, but this kind of quality work is what people want to see coming out of fresh graduates. So this is something that you should really put your heart, your soul, your passion into. I mean, I, I would say that I'm going to sit here and tear down every single one of these, but I, I really don't have any complaints. Um, if you guys had specific questions or if you guys wanted input about it, I'd be more than happy to share. Wow. I know. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. Which was the best? Oh. 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 That's not going to happen. <laughs> Close. Close. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. see, you don't want me to do that. I'll break everything. Um, <laughs> no, but, that's already broken. <laughs> but yes, if you guys did have any questions for me, uh, I would have been here for a while. I will be here for a while. You can ask me here if you guys want to find me outside after this. I'll be around. Feel free to correct with me on LinkedIn. But anything you want to ask, I, I will. I will take it. How terrible was the first game studio in your year? <laughs> 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 uh, we spent an entire semester figuring out mocap tech. Never made it in the game. Bad. That was else? before I took on the class. <laughs> <laughs> it was just basically we stole her in her free time to come help us do mocap. No? Nothing? Wow. What's up? Uh, if you don't mind me asking, how was it like uh, dealing with a, like a studio shutting down? Like, is it uh, I think that I'll be fine. Um, it's just the nature of the industry. It's, it's one thing that you really don't think about. You always think that you're going to be able to you know, find the perfect job and you're going to be able to stay there forever. It, it's hard, but it's, it's, it's how the industry works. Um, a lot of times companies come up real quick, they make wonderful titles, and then they disappear. That's just how it is. I mean, I've worked at five game companies in my time, and three of them have shut down. Not while I was there, thankfully, but it's just how it is. And I love all the people that I've worked with. Um, I'm sorry that I had to see them all go. If I could bring back Telltale, I would. Yes. Um, when you first left UAT, what was the transition like when you got into the industry? Derek, am I allowed to say this? <laughs> yeah, you can tell them <coughs> what, you, sure what you did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when I started, um, I was first, I worked for an indie studio that was local here, you guys may have heard of, called Retora. Um, and then soon after that, I went and did QA for a company called Volition. You guys are, yeah, I know. Uh, we worked on games like Saints Row, um, Red Faction, some other titles I don't remember. It was many, many years ago. But I transitioned from QA into the technical side of things and then became a producer at Telltale. Yeah. What? No, what was your favorite thing about the industry so far? The people. Um, the companies aren't what make the games. If you join a company because you want to work for that company and you don't want to work with the people, that's the wrong reason. Uh, it's always the people around you. Um, all the people that you have here in the class, be nice to talk to, be friends with. I mean, I went to Telltale, and I didn't realize that there were 15 UAT kids that worked there. These people... You're going to see them out in the industry. It's very, very close knit. Always be nice and uh, don't make fun of people. Lynn. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Dave's is still. I was on vacation and I had to fly back to fire some people, so not always. <laughs> uh, it's it's really hit or miss. Um, I mean, it really depends on the company. Uh, sometimes companies are private, sometimes companies are public. Public companies are usually a little safer because you can have a higher gauge on it, but you never know. Um, unless you get f high enough up so you can actually understand the practices, the state of stuff, it, stuff can change. It's, it's just how it is. I mean, you can go from being employed, not employed, and you can go to the next great company after that. Um, you might lose a job, but it's always about the steps forward. So fixating on when something is going to close or just be like, oh my god, am I going to lose my job? You can go insane. Trust me, I've gone insane before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, go ahead. What were some of the things that uh, you and CJ are not preparing for when you went to your European career? A lot of stuff is generalized just because there's so much stuff in the games industry. Um, specialization, for instance. So myself, I'm, I'm more of a technical producer. Um, I didn't know that existed when I was here. You know, I knew production. For instance, if you're an artist but you love programming, there's a job for that. If you're an artist but you love design, there's a job for that. If there's an artist that loves HCI, there's a job for that. Every single thing has a separate division in separate portions. Um, a lot of people would speak generally about what they want to do. I would actually ask all of you that, you know, look through the credits on games. If there's something that really stood out to you, some specific part that you were just like, man, this is, you know, my favorite part about this title. Find out what it is, how that stuff is made. If that's what you want to do, if you want to do stuff like VFX, or if you want to do in-game cutscenes, you want to be a cinematic artist. There's so many different things to do. There's all of this stuff that can fill in your niches. And I would actually say to you guys, focus on getting your generals, your basics here, but have an idea of where you want to go from there. Um, you never stop learning in the games industry. I mean, even right now, I'm unemployed taking certifications while I go around the country doing job interviews. It's, it's all about continuing to learn, continuing to grow yourself. <laughs> yes. Um, but. There's just so much out there. Any other questions? Well, so um, mm -hmm. from your time here at UAT, mm -hmm. what are things that if you could go back and do some things differently or you know, take different classes or focus on different things, are there anything like that that you would recommend for students who are currently in the program to keep an eye on? Um, focus on your base set of skills. Really talk to these people. I mean, your teachers, they have been in the industry, they know this stuff. If there's something that you want to do or if there's something that you want to work on, chances are that they can help prepare you for that. Um, all the classes that I took, I absolutely loved them. I wouldn't change a thing other than maybe taking advantage of these guys more to find, pick their brain, figure out what you guys might want to do, figure out where you want to go. That's, uh, these people are wonderful. Uh, they taught me everything that I know, except for Derek. <laughs> <laughs> But no, they, they are good people. Um, take advantage of them while you have them. A lot of times you leave UAT or maybe you go out into the workforce. I mean, I still text Lynn, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, we, we sent her a picture for Christmas. It's, uh, they're, they're very valuable resources. These are people that you are gonna pretty much know for the rest of your life. I mean, every single time I come back, uh, I see them. That's just how it is. I always learn something new. Well, even though I haven't ever taught him anything, <laughs> it, it feels good as well. It's like, you know, he was in town, so, and you guys know me, I'm going to push social media, but he pinged me on Facebook. He's like, hey, I'm in town. Do you guys want, you want me to swing by? You know, I said, nah, these students aren't worth it. <laughs> but he insisted coming in, so. Um, but yeah, it's like, like you said, you know, 15 students at Telltale. We were talking on the car ride over here, like he's looking at places and all that. It's like, hey, you know, if you're trying to get into this company, you know this guy over there because he's an alumni, you know, and he did. And it's like, you know, comparing notes like that, you can keep a nice network going. Um, and it's why it is why we keep pushing you guys, you know, get Facebook, get your LinkedIn, get on Twitter because these are the kind of things that happen. You know, somebody's in town, they reach out, and say, hey, I'm here for three days. You know, can I do something? And, and that's what happened in this case. So. Fantastic.
I, I just want to say something about you, oh, just God. just so everyone knows a little bit about a little bit about Andrew. You know, when he was here, he was one of those students that was always working. He was actually a dual major. He tried to be a triple major, but the, he actually capped out of credits, as you put it. <clears throat> and so, you know, remember, these are the students, the ones that get the jobs, are the ones that are working hard all the time. But you might also notice that he's got a super positive attitude, completely opposite of me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and that, that's a good thing, though, as I say, he's talking about how <clears throat> he's been actually going around and teaching about networking. He's really good at that. That's how he quickly moved up the ranks. It's such a small industry. <clears throat> and if you follow that, you have advice, and you're always positive. You're always looking to the next big thing. You treat the people around you good. Uh, it's going to come back, and it's going to be a good thing for you. I'm not worried at all that he's going to find a new gig and he's going to be in a good place. Not worried at all, just because of the type of student he is. But this is what I was saying. This is the kind of stuff to help him be successful. I'm hoping that you guys kind of see that. You kind of notice the things that he's kind of exuding at, from his personality uh, or whatever, and then you guys want to emulate those same things in order to be able to be successful also because that's how you, that's how you get in. I mean, the people, he keeps emphasizing people. Right? I mean, he mentioned that the businesses, the business exists, but it's the people that make the business, right? You have those connections. It's such a small industry. You have no idea how small it is. It's funny. You just keep getting this comeback. You'll find out somebody you know works here, does this, whatever. Um, that's why you have, always have to be a good people person. He's one of the best people, persons, uh, so to speak. And so, you know, he's, and he's really good. He's a hard worker. And I just wanted to say that about him. Yeah. Confidence is key. If you can't have pride in your work and you can't talk about it with pride, I mean, why would someone look at you and hire you? It's all about being proud of what you do and putting your heart and soul into this kind of stuff. And that's that's my passion. Thanks, Michael. Yes. Do you have to choose where you're going to work on next? What would it be? Um, actually, uh, so there's a, a subdivision. And this is actually one of those things that I had no idea existed when I was here. Um, but what I would love to do is be an account manager at Microsoft. Basically, who they are is they're the Microsoft account holder for studios. So essentially, it's a person who coordinates back and forth between the entire studio. They essentially own those titles. They are literally the person that releases everybody's titles. So they might have you know six or seven game companies working on them. At Telltale, I was on eight game projects at one time, and I just love insanity. Just, if everything on fire around me is, I'm just I'm happy with everything. Just. You know the dog? This is fine. That's me. Uh, do we have somebody over here? This first? Yes, right here. Okay. All right. Next. Yes. Um, what were your majors that you were taking? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I got a bachelor's in game design, a bachelor's in game art and animation. Um, you are more than welcome to do so. However, uh, with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk some social media business here. Um, if you do wanna connect with me on LinkedIn, that's great. Send me a message with it. Don't send me a generic request. Um, be sure to you know explain, oh yeah, I met you here. I'd love to connect to you for this reason. Just because I tend to peruse them and shuffle them down. But yeah, you guys are more than welcome to and if you guys wanted to talk to me at any point, I'm, I'm happy to provide any feedback or if you guys want, I don't know, look over a resume or something. Anybody? What are some big mistakes you've seen others make in the game industry and how do you go about avoiding them? Uh, stop learning. Uh, that's the biggest one. Many people get a job and they just pigeonhole themselves into that position. Um, they're just like, I'm comfortable here. I'm going to stay here. I'm not going to learn anymore. I'm not going to grow. Uh, when you find a job, you don't stop learning. You need to constantly be learning. The industry is changing. The technology that we used when I went to school here is vastly different than what it is now. I used to use UDK. The only way that you can build a water system in that is if you use mesh colliders that are square. <laughs> it's terrible. But I mean, everything's constantly changing. I've been working on new engines. I've been brushing up on new softwares, all this different tracking stuff, getting certifications. You need to keep learning. Um, learning doesn't stop when you leave the classroom. It's all about educating into yourself. It's about bettering yourself. That's what you should focus on. Um, a lot of people will find that they get a job, and it's exactly what they want, and then the position changes. And it's something that they, they don't know how to do, or something that they don't understand. That's what you want to avoid. You always want to be the person, when someone asks a question, if you say, yeah, I can do that, 
you say that enough times, you're going to end up with a pile of work, but people are going to recognize that. They're going to know that they're the person that they can go to. You want to speak to the prima donna attitude, too? Oh, yeah. Also, I mean, you can be good and you can be fantastic, but if you're a pain to work with, <laughs> it's, it's really bad. Um, you can be the best person in the world at your job, but if you do not show up to work on time and you do, are just not present, it's like you're not even an employee. I mean, you have to focus on being a team player, too. So egos are good when talking about your work and being proud of your teams, but don't use it to sit there and talk about yourself and how you're so much better than your team. Yes? What software or tool have you used most over the last year? Don't answer this. To be honest, Word, Microsoft Word. Can we take bets? Excel. <laughs> Excel. <laughs> Excel. <laughs> Excel. What was that? <laughs> I spent my life in spreadsheets. I, I can program Pac-Man in spreadsheets. Just saying. Uh huh. No reason I said that. It's his fault, by the way. Uh, anybody else? Nothing. Anything's fair game, guys. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. It's you. My favorite thing was the people. Um, my department was just fantastic. Uh, it was, they were a little bit more industry professionals than I. They'd been in there a long time. I mean, I worked with a guy, if you guys have ever seen back in the day, there was Cool Moves by PlayStation. I worked with the guy that was in those. That was pretty cool. But just, they were uh, all negative Nellies, and I was positive, and they would always talk about, you can't wait for the day that you break. And it was just, ah, it was a glorious time. Still haven't broken yet. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's the people. Um, the least favorite thing I would say is just, you know, sometimes you don't have enough people. Um, sometimes you have to work more. Overtime sucks. Uh, overtime happens, especially when you're working in so many good games and so many different things. I love what I do, and I'm happy to do it, but I wouldn't want to force anyone to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes? Did the things you learn in your degrees uh, go into your job just as well, or did you feel like you had to learn new things over again? Oh, uh, they went in perfectly. Um, so as a producer, um, I, I don't spend a whole lot of time in design. I don't spend a lot of time in art and animation. But what that allows me to do, it allows me to communicate effectively with those individuals. So if you're sitting here talking about UV meshes and I have no idea what that is, uh, I'm, I'm essentially useless, but if I can sit there and talk with it, have a clear and concise understanding, that's what I get out of it. And I am just absolutely ashamed to say that I really, really love texturing, and I just do that in my free time. That is that man's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I own 3DS Max because of you. Oh, I have cool. Maya 2 Lynn. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, anybody else? Well, yeah. So you talked about uh, transitioning and working with people who have, mm -hmm. you know, a wealth of more experience than you just by the nature of the industry. How do you go about that process and how do you kind of make yourself fit in with those people who have, you know, 10, 20, 30 years of experience on you? So that is a very good question. Um, so first and foremost, uh, a lot of people, especially when they start new jobs, um, they feel like they don't belong. Uh, they feel like they're not good enough. The fact is that you probably beat out 10 other applicants to get that job. It's because you have a good skill set, but it means that you can also grow. Use those people around you. Um, whenever I would have issues, I, I would talk to my director. Um, whenever I had something that I needed to learn or understand, I would talk to other members of my team. Um, really using those individuals around me, because they have this experience, this knowledge, and while some of it you might not want to know, like they programmed a game in Dragon or something like that, it's still cool, and they have a lot of stuff that is valuable to learn. So for instance, I learned that my boss was a paralegal at Comedy Central before she came over here and then became the director of operations at Telltale Games. But I also got to learn all about legal stuff from her. Um, and because of that, I was able to do things like ratings. Uh, I was able to submit for ratings. And just all of this understanding and all this kind of stuff, you don't know what someone knows unless you ask. Okay, time for one more question. 
<clears throat> There's two people. How do you fight it? Let's do two. That's <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I should talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and the next question. <laughs> <laughs> Just not if it find, a lot find me out. after. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so you, you talk about like learning afterwards mm -hmm. when you graduate. Do you have any like good resources like uh, for that? Yeah. Um, so there's a, a couple of websites that keep up industry standard tools. Um, I would also recommend talking with your teachers because they talk to people like myself who are also in the industry. Um, but I would recommend just Googling things. I don't think that there's a set list, but if you go through and peruse job listings on maybe a company you want to work for, they're going to list off the software and skills that they're looking for, and you can do that. Um, there's also a program called IEP. Uh, it's something you should do post-graduation. Don't even think about it right now, but it's um, a program maintained by industry professionals, um, and they're constantly updating it, and it's basically just industry standard items. You can go through it. You can test it. You can get certified for it. Uh, it's, it's my go-to now. Here I am preaching different things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank Good you, guys. Yeah, thank you very much. No. I think Tyler had an excellent solution. You guys really should receive this individual feedback while he is here and willing. So what we're going to do is break for lunch. And then about 12 o'clock, if you leads want to get set up with a workstation and run your build and grab Andrew when you can, get some individual feedback. Okay. All right. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Andrew. Right. Thank you. <laughs>